I just need to do a reminder that I filmed these like a month in advance. So while I'm wearing an I Voted sticker, it obviously is post the election for you. Um, a reality I am very scared of. So hopefully it was a good result. Um, I don't want to take off my I Voted sticker. It's October 20th. I voted early. Uh, so you're just gonna have to live with it even though it's post-election for you guys. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Under Wraps. Under Wraps is a 1997 Disney Channel original movie. It is considered the first DCOM. It is directed by Greg Beeman, cinematography by Mark W. Gray, editing by Norman Holland, music by David Michael Frank, and it's written by Don Reimer. I've covered everybody except Mark W. Gray and Don Reimer in previous videos. They will be listed and linked in the description. Mark W. Gray is best known for Meter Men. The Search for Simon, The Morning Guy, and Travis Ritchie Sketch Show. Don Reimer is best known for Big Mama's House, Rio 2, Surf's Up, and Ferdinand. The film stars Mario Yadidia, Adam Wiley, Clara Bryant, Ken Hudson Campbell, and Bill Fagerbake, Fagerbake, I've covered him before, I'm so sorry. Mario Yadidia plays Marshall and is best known for Warriors of Virtue, Jack, James and the Giant Peach, and this. Adam Wiley plays Gilbert and is best known for Picket Fences, The King and I, Child's Play 2, and this. Clara Bryant plays Amy and she's best known for True Confessions, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and this. Ken Hudson Campbell plays Bruce and is best known for Armageddon, Groundhog Day, Home Alone, and Down Periscope. Bill Fagerbake, Fagerbaki plays Ted and Harold. It's like Peter Pan, where the stuffed dad is playing with. Okay. And I covered him in the video about the Gargoyles movie, The Awakening. Link in the description. As I said, this is considered the first Disney Channel original movie, so going forward, anything released on the Disney Channel is pretty much a decom, and I'm so excited because decoms are so good. They're such a special brand of film, and I'm excited to be watching them. I can't wait to crack into Xenon and just all of them. Smart House! And I'm very, very excited to be watching DCOMs finally, even though technically I've been watching Disney Channel releases. Officially, DCOMs have begun. I'm very excited about that. Before I talk about the movie, I really wanted to touch on the controversy around um, opening sarcophagi. Sarcophaguses? Uh, because there is a little bit of a controversy, especially more recently, about disturbing tombs of, you know, pharaohs and royalty of Egyptian culture. And I would also like to say that Egyptians weren't the only people that practiced mummifications. Incas, Aztecs, a lot of old civilizations practiced mummification. But obviously the most famous mummies in our brain are Egyptian just because of how tombs were and all that kind of stuff and just how society has made that so. And there's a little bit of a controversy going on more more in recent years that it's disrespectful to uh, disrupt the dead and their tomb and their resting place. And it's a fine line because um, the civilization is long dead uh, so and the culture is long dead like there aren't people like there aren't pharaohs still you know what I mean? like so and archaeologists talk a lot about it and all this kind of stuff about how they're in another country doing digs that they need permission to do and if the country and that government is okay with them doing it then so it's a very controversial issue and i just wanted to touch on that so y'all don't think i'm sitting here like under ramps is blah 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 and not aware of the fact that Opening tombs and all that can be considered um, not cool, indelicate, uh, disrespectful, you know. Uh, but National Geographic did do a really great article. Um, I believe it was called When Is It Okay to Dig Up the Dead or something like, along those lines. Uh, it's a really good article talking about the fine line between like desecrating a grave. Like if I went to a graveyard and dug up someone that was buried two years ago, I would go to prison. Like, that's not okay. Grave robbing is bad, blah, blah, blah. But if, like, someone's digging up someone who was buried thousands and thousands of years ago, it's the same kind of disrespect, etc. So it's a very fine line to walk. There's um, good arguments on both sides, and I just wanted to make you guys very aware of that going forward, because we're about... And, 
disclaimer, this movie is obviously like fun and ridiculous and not accurate to anything at all. Just needed to get that out of the way. So I'm going to be talking about this movie like it's fun and stupid and like not taking the history of anything seriously at all, just as a little disclaimer, okay? I think I'm also going to touch on the one giant negative I have for this film and then I'll move on. I did like it, just as a heads up, I really enjoyed this movie, I had a great time just so you're not getting all butthurt at me. But I wanna talk about the one big, well, there's two things I'm not crazy about, but they tie together. So it's the one big thing I'm not crazy about. And it's kind of the toxic masculinity going on in this movie. And some of y'all might be rolling your eyes, but it's true. Gilbert is my favorite character. Gilbert is hilarious. His sarcasm is on point. When he's telling Marshall like, what about this kid? He disappeared and no one's seen him since or talked to him since. And Marshall's like, he moved to Toronto. And Gilbert's reaction is, really? He never writes. <laughs> I'm just like, it's so hysterical to me. And Gilbert's just so funny throughout the entire movie. I think Gilbert's hilarious. Not like him being a scaredy cat, like that's not funny or whatever, but like his sarcasm and his one-liners and just everything. I think Gilbert is the best character in the film. I think he's so funny. And I think the way they treat Gilbert, because he's scared and doesn't want to do that. He's the logical character. He's like, hey, maybe we shouldn't break into the really scary house. Hey, I don't really want to do that. We could die. Like, be and they make fun of him for that. They're really nasty to him. And by them, I mean like Marshall and Amy are really mean to him about it. And there's just a lot of like toxicity when it comes to like him wanting to just do what's best for himself and what he like he's he doesn't want to do that and there's nothing wrong with that doesn't make him scared to get doesn't make him less of a cool guy like doesn't make him less of a man and later he wears a pink feather boa and he's boy george or uh i forgot who he said he was not boy george boy george um he's dennis rodman or i forgot who he said he was supposed to be but he's wearing a feather bow a pink feather boa and they're like really picking on him for it and he likes the sound of music over horror films and they pick on him for that and it's just like get your toxic masculinity out of here and the person who kind of does it the worst and the most is amy amy gets on a ton of boys in the film about how they're not you know brave men or cool men and she also makes a lot of comments that i thought were really inappropriate for like a 13 14 year old girl to be making she said something about her bra she like wears a bra or whatever which was just so like out of nowhere i'm like okay fine and then later they were talking about um they were picking on gilbert for his pajamas and he was like well what what do your pajamas look like you don't have a pair of pajamas that are creepy and she says i sleep in the nude and I know like when I was a teenager, we would make stupid jokes like that. Like all teenagers are think sexual stuff is funny and they make jokes like that. But I don't know, it just felt very gross because it's written by a grown man and a grown man wrote that for her to say. It just was a little bit creep, but that's, you know, whatever. She made some weird comments. Teenagers can do that, whatever. But she was so nasty to like guilt. She only was nice to Marshall because she obviously had a crush on him and it was really gross and I didn't like it and she was so nasty to Gilbert. And then this random guy that was like trying to like ask her to hang out, she was brutal to, his name was Todd. She was absolutely brutal to him. And they were like, yo, why were you mean to him? Like, he's pretty chill. And she was like, he saw the Olsen twins movie twice. How can I respect a guy like that? And they're like, oh, fair point. What's wrong with liking the Olsen twins? Like, I don't, what makes you less of a, is it gay to like the Olsen twins? Like. You know that meme going around where it's like, <laughs> like men are like real men don't wear masks. And then like someone tweets, fellas, is it gay to survive a pandemic? <laughs> Just like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, who cares if you saw the Olsen twin movie twice? Why does that matter? Like, and why does it matter that Gilbert likes the sound of music? Like who cares the toxic masculinity in this film is off the charts and I just wanted to get that out of the way because I don't think those are like okay messages to be sending. But moving on to the rest of the movie, this movie is fun. It's got some hilarious sarcasm and self-aware humor. I was not expecting some of the sarcasm in it and the kids do a really great job of delivering that stuff. It was very like, it wasn't like kids movie. You know how some movies are very like, oh, this is for very small children. Yikes. 
This one, it was definitely for like teenagers who are trying to be like more adulty and make adult jokes and stuff. And I got a kick out of it. I thought it was so fun. It's stupid. Like there's no way sarcophaguses or sarcophagi are open like that. Not a chance. Do they open and close like a door? No, but like the mummy is so funny. Harold the mummy was hilarious. The when he pees in the first scene. What? I just, this was great. Um, <laughs> Correct me up. The movie had some really, really funny moments and I loved, I loved the divorced parents representation. We're finally away from like, just not talking about the other parent or killing the other parent. And we're in the area where like, it's finally like, oh, my parents are divorced. And I really liked that. I, my parents are divorced. So I love to see divorced parents representation because I know what that's like. Um, I don't like Amy as a character, which makes me sad because she's the only real female woman, ew, female, woman character in the film, girl character, woman, uh, not female, <laughs> woman character in the film. So it makes me sad that I don't like her, but she was just mean she, for no reason. She was so nasty and I hated that. I hated that she was so mean, especially to Gilbert. Gilbert's the best. He was so funny. Um, I thought the reveal that Kubot or Kubot, yeah, Kubot was, alive still was super late in the movie like i thought it was just going to be about the mummy's shenanigans and then they introduced bad guys and i was like oh there's bad guys oh okay dang all right sure i thought it was really just going to be about the mummy shenanigans i didn't realize it was gonna be like have some bad guys in it um i th i think that might be everything because Yep, I know I touched on the toxic masculinity a little long and I know a lot of you don't like when I do that, but I did genuinely enjoy this movie. Like I thought it was a good time. I would definitely recommend watching it. It's not the best made movie of all time. Like it's not gonna get a very good score because some of the technical stuff was, you know, average at least, but I definitely liked it. I recommend the film for sure. My final rating is five mummies out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent Death Toll and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Fun, fun things always going on over there. Weekly blog posts, vlogs, behind whatever, everything. I need to do more live streams over there. And Q and A's if you're interested, but yeah, all that good stuff. Buy merch, merch, merch. <laughs> Not that, merch. Merch still going on. Um, verified, I will have some exciting stuff coming up, merch wise. And I can say that with confidence because it's already been washed and tested. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I don't have to try to review. Until next time, let's try that again. Comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are. So you do you. <laughs> And don't be kubat about it. I voted. It's way past the election for you.